During the California gold rush, thousands of prospectors risked everything for a shot at a life-changing fortune. Most of them went home with nothing but dust in their pockets. But a handful of people became fantastically wealthy, and they never once panned for gold. They were the ones selling the picks, the shovels, the denim jeans, and the wagons. They understood a simple truth. In a gold rush, the most reliable way to make a fortune isn't to dig for gold. It's to sell the tools everyone else needs. Today, we are living in the biggest gold rush in human history, the digital gold rush. The gold is the next viral app, the next billion dollar startup. For every Netflix, Uber, or Airbnb that strikes it rich, there are thousands that fail. But just like in the 1840s, the real enduring power often belongs to the companies you've probably never heard of, the ones selling the digital picks and shovels. These companies form a hidden empire, an invisible infrastructure holding up our entire digital world. And to understand how this empire was built, we have to start with the very ground everything is built on, the cloud. Not long ago, if you wanted to launch a website or an app, you had to do something that sounds crazy today. You had to buy physical computers called servers. You'd store them in a special air-conditioned room, manage all the wiring, replace parts when they broke, and pray you bought enough to handle your traffic, but not so many that you wasted a ton of money. It was like having to build your own personal power plant just to turn on a light bulb. Then Amazon had a brilliant idea. They had already built a colossal network of servers to run their own e-commerce site. What if they rented out access to all that computing power? This was the birth of Amazon Web Services, or AWS. Suddenly, instead of buying your own expensive servers, you could rent a slice of Amazon's, paying only for what you used. This changed everything. It was the ultimate shovel. It meant a couple of developers in a garage could access the same world-class computing power as a massive corporation, allowing them to build and scale their ideas almost infinitely. When you watch a movie on Netflix, you're not connecting to a Netflix server. You're connecting to thousands of servers Netflix rents from Amazon. They own the movies, but Amazon owns the digital land the theater is built on. But having a plot of digital land is useless without a blueprint and a factory to build on it. And that brings us to the next layer of this hidden empire, the automated assembly line for code. Software is built from code, which is really just a giant set of instructions. When you have more than one developer working on a project, things get chaotic fast. How do you keep track of who changed what? What if two people change the same piece of code at the same time? For years, this was a messy, manual process that led to countless errors. Then came Git, a brilliant invention that acts like a time machine for code. And on top of that, a company called GitHub built a platform that became the global hub for software development. Think of GitHub as the ultimate blueprint vault. It's a place where millions of developers store their code, collaborate on projects, and track every single change ever made. It's so fundamental that nearly every piece of software you use today, from the operating system on your phone to the app you use to order coffee, has its blueprints stored on GitHub. But storing the blueprints is only half the battle. You still have to build the product. This is where another set of tools, known as a CI-CD pipeline, comes in. This is the automated assembly line. As soon as a developer saves their new code to GitHub, this pipeline automatically grabs it, builds it, runs it through a gauntlet of thousands of quality control tests, and if everything passes, it can deploy the new version to the world. All in a matter of minutes, with no humans involved. This automated factory can pump out new software at an incredible rate. But there was still a huge problem. How do you ship this software so it works perfectly anywhere in the world on any computer? The solution was found in, of all places, global shipping. For decades, one of the biggest headaches in software was the it works on my machine problem. A developer would build an app on their laptop and it would work perfectly. But when they sent it to someone else or tried to run it on a production server, it would crash and burn. This happened because the app depended on very specific versions of other software on that original machine. Moving it was like trying to move a fragile sandcastle by scooping it up with your hands. Then, in the 1950s, the physical world solved this problem with the invention of the standardized shipping container. It didn't matter what was inside, electronics, bananas, cars, as long as it was in the standard box, it could be moved by any crane, ship, or truck anywhere in the world. A company called Docker 
did the exact same thing for software. A Docker container is a digital shipping container. It packages up an application and everything it needs to run, all the code, all the settings, all the dependencies into one neat, tidy box. Now that container can be run on a developer's laptop, a test server, or in the cloud on AWS, and it will work exactly the same way every single time. It completely solved the, it works on my machine problem. But what happens when you have thousands or even millions of these containers like Google or Spotify do, you need an orchestra conductor. That's a tool called Kubernetes. Originally built by Google, Kubernetes is the master logistics system for containers. It's the port authority that decides which ship gets which container, automatically replaces any that get damaged, and scales the whole operation up or down based on demand. So now we have our digital land, our factory, and our universal shipping containers. But modern apps don't work in isolation. They need to talk to each other to handle things like payments or directions. And they do this using a kind of secret universal language. Think about the Uber app. It doesn't have its own mapping system, it doesn't run its own credit card payment system, and it doesn't operate its own text messaging service. Instead, it calls other services to do that work for it. This is done through something called an API, or Application Programming Interface. You can think of an API as a waiter in a restaurant. You, the app, don't go into the kitchen to cook your own food. You just give your order to the waiter, the API, and they handle all the complex communication with the kitchen, the other service, and bring the food back to you. This has created another huge market for picks and shovels companies. Instead of building a complex and secure payment system from scratch, a developer can just use Stripe's API. In a few lines of code, they can hire one of the world's best payment companies to do the job. Need to send a text message or make a phone call from your app? You use Twilio's API. These companies are hyper-specialized tool makers, providing one perfect tool that anyone can integrate into their own project. By using these specialized API workers, companies can build incredibly complex apps. But with all these moving parts, the cloud servers, the containers, the APIs, how do you make sure nothing breaks? You need an all-seeing eye. When your app is running on thousands of servers across the world, managing millions of containers and talking to dozens of APIs, finding the source of a problem is like finding a needle in a condiment-sized haystack. Is the app slow because of a bug in the code? Is a server in Virginia overloaded? Is the payment API down? This is where observability tools come in. Companies like Datadog and New Relic provide the mission control for the internet. They install tiny agents across a company's entire digital infrastructure that collect billions of data points every second. They track everything, server health, application performance, user traffic, error rates. Their dashboards turn this ocean of data into actionable information. They can automatically detect when something is wrong, and more importantly, they help engineers pinpoint the exact root cause in seconds, rather than hours or days. This is the nervous system of a modern tech company, constantly monitoring its health and alerting it to danger. This digital mission control is essential for keeping today's internet running, but the tools themselves are now undergoing a radical transformation. The picks and shovels are becoming intelligent, powered by the very technology they help create, artificial intelligence. For all of history, tools have been passive. A shovel doesn't tell you where to dig, but that's changing. The next generation of developer tools are active partners in creation. The most famous example is GitHub Copilot. Trained on virtually all the public code on the internet, Copilot is an AI assistant that works directly inside a developer's code editor. A developer can write a comment describing what they want to do, and Copilot will write the actual code for them. It can auto-complete lines, suggest better ways to solve problems, and even write documentation. It's like having a world-class senior developer as your Copilot, constantly helping you navigate and build faster than ever before. And this is just the beginning. AI is being integrated into every corner of the tooling universe. It's helping to automatically generate tests, to predict which parts of an application are most likely to have bugs, and to analyze security vulnerabilities. The tools aren't just helping us build software anymore. They are starting to help us think about how we build software. The shovels are beginning to point to where the gold is buried. The digital world can feel magical. With a tap, a car appears. With a click, a movie starts. But it's not magic. It's a colossal, intricate machine built on layers and layers of foundational technology. It's an ecosystem of picks, shovels, factories, and shipping containers, operated by millions of developers around the world. While we celebrate the prospectors who find the next vein of digital gold, the true, enduring architecture of our age is being built by the toolmakers. 
They are the quiet giants, the hidden empire that has created the most consistent and profound wealth in the new economy. They proved, once again, that in a gold rush, the smartest play is often not to dig, but to sell the picks and shovels. Thanks for watching. If you found this look into the internet's hidden infrastructure interesting, consider subscribing for more deep dives into the technology that shapes our world.